Well, good morning, friends. My name is Joanne Badiger, and I'm the director of Student Ministries here at Herring United Methodist Church. And I'm so grateful that you are worshiping with us this morning. Merry Christmas! It is a good day to worship God together. And so this service is going to look a little different, and it is a service of lessons and carols. And what a lot of our friends at Herring and UMC are doing, they're tracing the Christmas story uh, through scripture and song. And so I'm really, um, I'm just so glad that we get to experience that together. And so just want to make sure uh, if you haven't had a chance already, drop in the chat uh, who you're worshiping with, where you're worshiping from. Um, maybe take a selfie in your fun new Christmas jammies. Um, but just know that we are just so glad that you are here and worshiping with us. And so with that, I invite you to breathe in God's love and to breathe out God's peace. And let us experience uh, the Christmas story anew in our time together this morning. My name is Scott Bach Hansen. I am the Director of Congregational Care and Discipleship at Herning United Methodist Church. I want to first say thank you very much for the warm welcome that you have provided for me as I have joined this faith community, and I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas. And now I am going to share the opening prayer for this service today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities to be able to spend time with our families and our friends and our loved ones during this holiday season and we're especially thankful for being able to hear the children laugh and be able to exchange gifts and just spend time with each other and exhale. Lord, we also appreciate the abundance of gifts that you provide to us on a regular basis, but especially that of your Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we come to today's service, we, we thank you for the gift of lessons and carols and we look forward to moving forward with our lives and spending time together during this week. Continue to be with us and be present in our lives. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Enjoy the service. This reading is from Genesis, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. During the day's cool evening breeze, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God in the middle of the garden's trees. The Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? The man replied, I heard your sound in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Did you eat from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman you gave me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate. The Lord God said to the woman, What have you done? And the woman replied, 
The snake tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the snake, Because you did this, you are the one cursed. Out of all the farm animals, out of all the wild animals, on your belly you will crawl, and dust you will eat every day of your life. I will put contempt between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. They will strike your head, but you will strike at their heels. This is the word of God for the children of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Genesis 22, 15 to 18. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and the sand in the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed, because you have obeyed me. This is the word of God for the children of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
A reading from Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light, a light that will shine on all who live in the land where death casts its shadow. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. These will be his royal titles. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He will rule forever with fairness and justice. From the throne of his ancestor David, the passionate commitment of the Lord Almighty will guarantee this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. 
But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore, Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth. And he will be our peace when the Assyrians invade our land and march through our fortresses. We will raise against them seven shepherds, even eight commanders.
This is a reading from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 35. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David, his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, how will this happen since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who is to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son.
Luke 2, 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city, called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage, and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the guest room. The word of God for the people of God. A reading of Luke 2, verses 8 to 16, from the King James Version. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said unto one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and found Mary, and Joseph, and the babe, lying in a manger.
Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, the Magi visits the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented them with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Amen. Bethlehem's plain, 
John chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son, from the Father, full of grace and truth.
Hi friends. My name is Mallory Hopper. I'm the Children's Ministry Director here at Hernan UMC, and I am so glad that you are here worshiping in this digital space today. Before we take a few brief moments to reflect on some of the scriptures that we've heard today, will you please join me in a posture of prayer? God of all things, people, and time, we are here, and we know you are here with us. May we open our hearts and minds to the ways you are speaking in this space to us all, your children. In Jesus' name, amen. So today's service is all about how the Bible has many nuggets of wisdom that we keep coming back to and how we like to read them over and over again. Now, even though the Bible is a book that has a cover and has many pages in between, it's not like any other book. In fact, it's a library. Inside this cover and in these many pages are many smaller books, many of which we've read from already today, that tell God's big story. And it goes like this. God loves us no matter what and will never, ever leave us. Now, that's kind of really amazing in and of itself. But what's really stinking cool is that that's not all that there is. Another way that I like to think of the Bible is a wind up music box. Have you ever seen one of those? They come in a lot of shapes and sizes and they have a little knob that you turn to make it play and all of them play a song. Now, just like how a music box plays a song, the Bible sings a song of God's love for us, of how there's nothing that we could ever do or say to make God love us any less. And just like music, that message makes us feel and think of things on the inside that we might not have realized before we heard the song. That's why we keep going back to read parts of the Bible, just like we can go back and wind up that music box to hear the song again. But you know how I said that that's not all that there is? The music box's song is even more beautiful when we share it with someone else, when lots of people get to hear that music and experience how the music makes them think and feel things differently than before for themselves. It's the same with the Bible. We go back, we read these stories, this book in this library over and over and over again. But now that we've read parts of this library and heard the song of God's big story for ourselves, we get to live out God's big story. We get to show people how much God loves them no matter what. We get to show them or read them parts of the library with our words and our actions. We are all notes in the song being sung about God's love. And we get to share this song just like anyone from a music box. So my hope and prayer for you, friends, is that you remember that the stories we've read today and every single one contained in the library of the Bible has one ultimate message. God loves you. And I hope you feel and experience how God is working in and through you and the world through these lessons. And I pray that we may all share the song of God's limitless love with anyone and everyone. Amen. Well, hey, this is Pastor Jonathan, and I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been a part of this worship service. It has been great to be able to gather online and to share in community in this kind of way uh, that was familiar for a while. Maybe it's new to some of you, but uh, hey, it's really great to be able to share in this service of lessons and carols. So thank you so much to everyone who has made this happen. I've got two brief announcements for you and then a word to send us on with. So uh, those announcements this week upcoming. So uh, we're, we're premiering this on Sunday, December 26th. In the week ahead, uh, from Monday the 27th on through uh, the 1st, our church office is closed. I'm in the office right now, uh, but I'm pre-recording this. We are uh, giving our staff a week off, and hey, that is well-deserved. Our staff's been working so hard all year long to make sure uh, that our church community is able to come together and do great things. And so I hope you'll join me in thanking our excellent staff for their hard work and uh, wishing them well on a well-deserved week apart.
The other thing I want to be sure to mention is that on Sunday, January 2nd, we're starting our brand new uh, sermon series. It's all about overcoming fear with the power of hope. I am so excited for this in the new year in the ways that I believe there's a lot of things that we might be afraid of right now, a lot of different ways that, that fear seeps into our culture, seeps into our lives, seeps into our world. But hope is greater than fear. That's what we proclaim at Christmas is that though darkness may be around us, light does not uh, is not easily overcome by darkness. And so uh, my hope and my prayer is that you will be a part of worship in the new year. Uh, Sunday, January 2nd, we get it all started with worship at 930, uh, our traditional worship service in the sanctuary, 11 o'clock, our modern worship service in Doe Fellowship Hall, and 5 o'clock, uh, our relaxed traditional service in the sanctuary. Those are all great opportunities to be together, to be in worship. Our 930 service is live stream. So if that's how you want to connect, that's there for you at youtube.com slash Herndon UMC. But most of all, in this new year, my hope and my prayer is that you will prioritize your spiritual well-being, that you'll prioritize being in Christian community together. And we'd love to be a part of that at Herndon United Methodist Church. So, hey, now it is time for us to go, go into this day, go into this week, go into this life. And so having heard the stories and sung the songs today, my hope and my prayer is that we will go to continue the story, to allow the songs to continue to be sung and to understand that the life that is before us continues to unfold. It's not only in the past. It's not only ahead of us. It is here. It is now. And it is our opportunity, our chance to sing along, to tell the story, and to believe that God is doing a great thing in and around us. So thanks be to God. Amen. Have a great week. God bless you. We'll see you real soon.